We're here with our partner, Republic Services. My name's Randy Stover, and I'm the Deputy City Manager here in Alhambra. Back here we have Joris Agardis. He's our recycling specialist. And in the back we have Priscilla Garcia, who's our management analyst. And this evening, Republic will be giving a presentation followed by a question and answer section. So I'm going to hand it over to Fred Sella now. Thank you, Randy. As Randy mentioned, uh, my name is Francella Aguilar, and I'm the Municipal Manager for Republic Services. And with me tonight, I have Connie Gonzalez, she's our Recycling Coordinator here in the City of Alhambra, and Lily Ortega in the back of the table, also Recycling Coordinator here in the City, both dedicated here uh, for Alhambra. And uh, tonight, first of all, I want to say thank you so much um, to, to see you guys participate. It, it makes me very happy and excited that um, you have questions and you're interested in following the programs and um, helping us with um, the implementation of these new programs here in the city. Um, so, next, Connie. So, uh, a little bit of the ag agenda of what we're going to cover tonight. We're going to talk about the new agreement that became effective July 1st. We'll talk about the residential and commercial services, as well as SB 1383, which we're probably going to be hearing a little bit more about it through other communities. Um, and that is the Food Waste and Green Waste Recycling Program. Uh, community engagement and participation, how important it is that the community is engaged and participating in these new programs, as well as additional programs that started with this new agreement. And Alhambra Recycles, that's an event that's gonna be happening moving forward in the city. And at the end, like Randy said, we'll have some time for any additional questions and answers that you might have, so feel free to you know, make a mental note or write it down and we will be answering your questions at the end of the presentation. But before I move forward, I would like to show you just a short uh, video clip of what Republic Services does as a residential service provider and then we'll move on to the presentation. Services. Next slide, please. We have been servicing the city of Alhambra for over 25 years. Uh, you might have seen before on your old containers maybe the words of BFI, Allied Waste, or Consolidated Disposal. Those haulers have now become part of the Republic family, so we're all one big happy family now. But you still have your same drivers, same management team, same local um, uh, offices, and provider. Now, there's a little bit of information about how to reach us, and we will leave a slide up um, at, a, at the end of the, of the presentation for you to take notes. But you can reach us via email at alhambra at republicservices.com. And Connie, Lily, and I are the persons that respond to this email, so you have local personnel responding to you. And also our customer service at 1-800-299-4898. Our hours um, sort of operation are there. And you can also uh, download that we have an app, Republic Services. You can download it, create your account, it's with your address, 
and um, create your login and password and you can actually order services if you have a broken card and you need to exchange it um, you're able to do that from this application Next slide. so let's talk about the residential services what's new um, as of july 1st as of today every single family resident should now have three new cards um, per unit and that's a black container which is for trash a blue one for mixed recyclables and your green card, which is for food and yard waste. Some of the other um, programs is you get four bulky items per year. You get battery recycling program now. There's a sharks container collection and a holiday tree collection, which will be starting Monday after Christmas. Since it's around the corner, I'll give you a little bit of details. So Monday after Christmas for three weeks, you do not need to call to schedule your pickup. You just put your tree at the curbside with no ornaments and no lights, and the driver will pick it up on your service day. So if your trash gets picked up on Monday, then your tree will be picked up on Mondays. After three weeks, it will be considered a bulky item, so you will need to schedule it. And I'll go into a little bit more details about the bulky program. Next slide. And I'm sorry, all those programs are at no additional cost, so they're already included. Uh, so let's talk about the black card. Um, this is a new card color here in the city for trash. So in these colors, you might be wondering, why are we switching the colors? It's a state requirement. It's a state law. Every single city has to use black uh, for trash, blue for recycle, and green for yard and green waste. So a little bit about your black card. Uh, items, this should be the card that should be the most empty card because we want to recycle as much as we can and divert as much as we can from the landfill. So in your black card, you should only have items such as wax paper, diapers, ceramics, wood, whether it's painted or treated or if it has glue, it's okay. Uh, pet waste, that's a big question here. People think that you can put it in the green and it's biodegradable, compostable. It has to go in the black. We cannot mix it with the green waste or food waste. Palm branches, and I know that people think the palm branches should go at the green card because it's part of a plant, but the, re the, the issue with the palm branches is that they're so thick and hard, they cannot be grinded. So they get stuck in the grinder, and we still have to pull them out and throw them in the trash. So they cannot become part of the compost. So palm branches need to go on the black card. And then other non-recyclables, right? If you know it's something that you can recycle, it should go either in the blue or the green. But again, this card should be your emptiest card now instead of your overflowing card. Okay, the blue card. That's a color that remains the same as you had before, which is mixed recyclables. And this should be your fullest card because at least 70% of a household uh, waste is recyclable. So let's go over uh, some of the items like aluminum cans, plastic bottles, newspaper, cereal boxes, plastic milk containers, mixed paper. Um, we have glass bottles, jars, any color, any numbers. Telephone books, juice cans, junk mail, paper and plastic bags. We do prefer for plastic bags. If you can put them into one bag, it's easier for us to separate and recycle that. And cardboard boxes and any similar item. Now what I do want to point out, if you really take a close look at this picture, everything's either, um, everything's either clean, empty, or um, dry. So that's something very important to keep in mind. If you're going to recycle, it needs to be dry, empty. So if you have bottles, let's just say a juice bottle, you want to rinse it, close it, and throw it back in. We leave them open, the juice comes out, it's now, as, as the comp truck is compacting, it's now gonna contaminate a percentage of the load. So we wanna keep it dry, empty, and clean. Um, if you have a plate and it has food, that has to go in the trash because now it's contaminating. But if it's dry, sometimes we have leftovers that we just had on a table. If they're clean, then you can recycle those. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, when you have a doubt, if it's got already contamination, then you do not want to mix it with your recyclables. Slide. Now the green one. This is the most complicated I would call. Um, I know this is something new. It's a new state law of why we have to now mix the green waste and the food waste. So your green card in the past used to be for trash. 
But now what you're gonna throw on this green card is your, it's pretty simple, your green waste and your food waste. And I'll go over some of the items. So what is acceptable in this green card is shrubbery or clippings from the yard or your garden, your green plants and grass clippings, leaves, pre and post consumer food. And what does that mean? So pre would be anything while you're prepping your meals, you're peeling cucumbers, or the leftover tomatoes that you're no longer using, the ants, banana peel, that's your pre. That can go in here, but also your post. So if you have the salad and it's already mixed with chicken and it's mixed with dressing, it can still go in this uh, cart. Leftover bread, leftover pizza, leftover hamburgers, whatever your leftovers are can also be into your green cart. I would say try to avoid liquids, but for the most part your solids can go in here. Um, also, food soil paper so, or cardboard, which is like your pizza boxes and any other similar items. Now, what is prohibited, I know sometimes it's questionable, but no dirt or rocks, so no construction material, no palm branches, and I talked a little bit about why, because of the grinding issues, no animal waste, and no birds of paradise, which is the same reason as the palm branches. So kitchen pail. Um, if you live in a single family home, one to four units, you should have received a kitchen pail. And if you haven't, we do have some in the back. We'd be more than happy to uh, provide you with one. What this kitchen pail is, is just a convenient tool. Um, it's very simple to use. Uh, just find a convenient space to place this container at, whether it's next to your sink or underneath your sink. So as you're prepping your meals, you can dump them in there, and once it's full, it's just convenient to carry this kitchen pail into your green carts. Now, let's make it clear, this kitchen pail is not serviced by Republic Services. You don't put it outside for service. It's just for you to keep your food waste as you're prepping or as you're cleaning after you're done eating your dinner, and then to carry it into your green cart. Some people live in, you know, in apartment complexes, and the carts are a little bit a ways. And so it's just easier to dump everything in there and then carry it into your green cart. Once you're done, you can rinse it and, um, and start all over again. So again, it's just very important to find a convenient uh, location to place these uh, kitchen pails. So for business and multifamily, um, do we have any business owners here commercial with commercial accounts? Okay, for, for, those, I, uh, for those of you, uh, if you live in an apartment complex with five or more units, or you have a business, we are starting uh, January 1st. So we probably haven't stopped by, you probably haven't received your blue and your green cards yet. And the reason is because since there's, there's a lot more to it, so we are gonna have, you will see the Lily or Connie and they'll be contacting property managers to go over the program to ensure that all the tenants get the right information and that they get um, the understanding of what is each one um, to be used for. And also they will be providing us with locations where they want the cards uh, for your own convenience. So after January 1st, you will get more information. However, once you're ready for um, to start with your um, composting, we can give you the kitchen pails, that's not a problem. So if you want to grab them now, um, they're in the back and you can ask Lily for one. So one of the main questions, why focus on organics, right? Why do we need to start separating food? Uh, why is this so important? Why doesn't just the trash company just, you know, dive, um, throw it in the trash like we used to before and process it? Well, per calorie cycle, organics represent 40% of the waste stream. And about 60 million, I'm sorry, 6 million tons of food waste every year. And what organics does is it creates methane gas and make methane gas absorbs the oxygen. So it's, it's not healthy for us. So that's why it's so important, and that's why we need everyone's help to separate it. We take it to a compost facility, and then it comes back as, as compost to the city. So this is the reason, I just wanted to take a slide to explain why it's so important, right? What, what's the reason? And it's also a state law, so it's now a requirement for each municipality to have a, cert, a specific uh, percentage of diversion. So a little bit of the life cycle of the organics. And I was corrected, this cart should be green, not blue. But just to kind of give you an idea of the steps, what happens with this um, organic waste. It first, um, it starts with you, with all of you, by source separating it and putting it in the green cart. 
Then it gets collected by one of our trucks and it goes into a trans transfer station. From there, it goes to one of our compost facilities and it comes back to the community as compost. And I'll talk about an event that's coming up where as a resident, you get, you get your compost for free. Then you can use it in your gardens and of course, it ends up again as a consumer fresh produce, right? To help with the growing of uh, vegetables and plants. So the importance of engagement and participation. We cannot do this without you guys. We can provide the service, the compost facilities, we can bring the compost back, but if you do not separate it at home, there's really no program. So it is very, very important that we get everyone participating. And I know it's not simple, it's something new, but if we go back to maybe um, over 10 years ago, we all had to start separating the recyclables, right? And we were all wondering why. And now we know why. So it's the same thing. It's going to take some time. There's going to be a lot of questions, but we are here to help and answer all your, all of your questions, or um, to make it easier for you. Uh, but we really do need you. So in order to make Alhambra more sustainable and a cleaner California, we need everyone to participate in this program. Now I'm going to go into some of the additional programs, and I know the bulky item program is something that a lot of people have a lot of questions about, and uh, there's a lot of information here, but I thought it would be very important to cover. So if you live in a single family between one and four units, then you get four annual pickups, and you get up to four items per pickup. If you are in a five plus unit complex, then you get up to four items per pickup, but it's one per unit per year. So if you live in a multifamily with 10 units, that means you're gonna get 10 pickups, one per unit. Okay, up to four items. Now let's just say you do have additional ones. There is a cost, but you can call us and you can schedule additional pickups if you need it. And um, all these pickups must be scheduled ahead of time. You, uh, you need to call us and give us at least 24 hours to schedule them, and then uh, we pick them up on your service day. Well, I'll take the questions at the end. Um, so acceptable and unacceptable. Uh, acceptable items uh, such as furniture, so anything that's a couch, a table, a chair. Um, we also clothing, and we do ask if you are gonna um, use clothing as a bulky item, it must be bagged or in a box, and that's just to avoid going everywhere, going into your neighbors, you know, blowing next door, and it's, it's just, it doesn't look nice, right? So get a bag and just bag it up. You can call a schedule and we'll pick it up for you. Um, we also have e-waste. So anything that, plug, that has a cord and plugs into the wall, TVs, electronic waste, uh, microwaves, fans, anything that's electrical, and universal waste, such as batteries, thermostats, and lamps. Those are also considered bulky items. And the reason is because it requires a different truck. So if you notice your residential trucks for the carts, they are automatic, automated, and they have the, the arms and they just come and pick up the carts. So there's really nowhere, nowhere to place a large item. So it requires different types of trucks. So for example, a large TV can require a flatbed or it can require a truck with the back dump. So that's why it's very important to call us. We will question what type of item so that we can provide the right equipment and be able to service um, as, as your items on your scheduled day. Now, some of the non-acceptable items, car bodies, right? So, for example, bumpers or a car door, tires, those are non-acceptable. Construction and demolition, such as brick or large amounts of rocks or dirt, that you have to rent a special container for those. Um, and items require more, more than two people, so we've had Request, uh, request of a jacuzzi. We cannot do that. <laughs> I don't know how they got it out on the curb, but they got it out and we cannot pick that up. So just large items that require more than two people, we cannot service. So battery recycling, that's actually a new program as well here in the city. And the locations that you see up on the slide have uh, battery recycling boxes. You can just um, Place your batteries, your old batteries in a little Ziploc bag, bring them over to uh, the more convenient location to you. Uh, Alhambra City Hall, here at the library, uh, Jocelyn Center at Story Park, and a Monster Park office. 
And these are just some examples. So you rechargeable batteries. You know, you have power tools like cordless power, uh, power tools with rechargeable batteries or the household batteries. No car batteries. Those are um, not serviced by us or they cannot be dropped off at these locations. Sharks Collection, this is also a new program here in the city. Um, each resident has up to four shark, shark containers at no cost to you. It's very simple to order. Um, you can, they get delivered directly to your door. It comes already with uh, package, packaging and uh, postage. And you can either call us at 855-737-7871 uh, or you can email us at sharks at republicservices.com and we can set this up for you. And the Alhambra Recycles event. So as we were talking about the compost coming back, this is all at no cost to the residents. And it's now, we were doing it once a year. It is now gonna be um, done twice a year in the spring and the fall. And the services that we provide at this event are electronic waste drop-off, so let's just say you've already reached your full, four bulky item pickups, but you still have um, some TVs or microwaves, you can bring them, it's a drive through event. You can have them in your trunk, pop your trunk open, we'll get it from you. Um, we also do plastic bottles and aluminum uh, cans. So we do have quite a few amount of residents that come with their bags already with um, uh, bottles and aluminum cans. Document shredding, that is confidential, we do it on site. You just put them in your boxes, all your confidential uh, papers. We shred up there for you. And, um, and then we have a compost giveaway. So we bring a big 40 yard full of compost, nice and fresh, um, organic, pretty, all 100% natural. And you can bring your bags or your buckets. We'll fill them up for you and you can walk away with them. We also do, um, it's a tradition here, you get an ice cream uh, scoop voucher for Fossil Men's ice cream. And the question is, what is the next event? So the next event will be April 23rd, 23rd uh, 2022. Mark your calendars. You can start putting your uh, papers for shredding. And uh, the following one is usually in October. It's usually done about the first or second week of October. And um, it's actually very uh, well attended. The last one we had it October 6th, and there was over 300 uh, vehicles that showed up. Um, and people were just really happy. And at the same time, this is all uh, being diverted from the landfill. We're helping you know, people clean their houses clean. And at the same time, we're disposing of the items um, the proper way. Excellent. And that concludes my presentations. Um, as I mentioned, I'm gonna leave our phone number, email address. And also, um, if you wanna take a picture, but this is a dedicated website specific to Alhambra. So you do find, you will find this presentation, there's a lot more information about all the programs, there's a lot more details there. It's, it also has our contact information, but I, uh, Connie, Lily, and I will still be here after the questions, so we will take some questions from the floor, and if you have more um, additional questions after we run out of time, we'll stay here for a little bit.